Okay, so this is part two of the Jacksonian democracy assignment that I have. And in this part, we're going to be talking instead about the 1830 pamphlet written by the Cherokee Nation in response to the last paper we just discussed. Uh, so we see that the entire thing has a completely different viewpoint of the situation at hand, um, revolved around point B, uh, which is that it's an invasion of Cherokee sovereignty. So the government is not necessarily doing a good thing for the Indians by trying to get them removed. And moreover, it's uh, again an invasion and that's how they view it. Um, and so we see here that the first three quotes I have listed are all factual. And then the last quote I included uh, was more of how they actually feel about it. Not necessarily the facts, but more of how they're feeling in this situation at hand. Uh, so we see that starts off here. This quote is actually the quote that starts off the entire letter. And it says here, if we are compelled to leave our country, we see nothing but ruin. So right off the bat, we see how they feel about this situation. It continues on by saying we have no prepositions in its favor. All of the inviting parts of it are preoccupied by various Indian nations, and they would regard us as intruders and look upon us with an evil eye. Now, the far greater part of that region is badly supplied with wood and water, and no Indian tribe can live as agriculturalists without these articles. All our neighbors would speak a language totally different from ours and practice different customs. Um, so as we can see throughout the first three quotes of facts, um, they definitely provided us with quite a lot of reasons to um, not necessarily want to go through with this removal. Um, we see that if you lived in, I don't know, here in, in this state, and you are accustomed to living here, you were born here, and um, the government is telling you you have to move to that trash can, and if you don't move to that trash can, then stuff's going to happen. Um, you're not going to necessarily be compelled to do so, even if the letter prior uh, was saying all the reasons why it's good for Indians, um, you have a very different viewpoint um, right here, clearly stating all the negatives. And uh, when you are in a situation like this, you have to be able to outweigh the cons to the pros. And in this situation, uh, the Cherokee Nation has clearly assessed um, their viewpoint, and they believe that. Uh, the pros definitely do not outweigh the cons. Um, so continuing on, we see that the way they feel, um, if all of these facts are not enough for you, uh, that there is not a man within our limits so ignorant as to not know that he has a right to live on the land of his fathers in the possession of his memorable privileges, and that this right has been acknowledged and guaranteed by the United States nor is there a man so degraded as to not feel a keen sense of injury on being deprived of this right and driven into exile. So clearly we have it, folks. They feel very hurt. And it's not necessarily that they feel angry towards all this, but moreover that they feel hurt. They feel in pain. They feel as if the people that should acknowledge this right, as we can see here, has been acknowledged and guaranteed by the United States. Their rights should be guaranteed as it states right here, but it's not happening, folks. Their rights are not being guaranteed, and that's where the pain comes in, and that's the entire drive of this letter. So I hope you guys like this assignment, and see you all next time.